everyone, it's Tanny Games here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have like a walkthrough tour video of my uh, Hobbit core kind of area that I have done. So I started this on stream um, and then I've kind of finished it uh, off stream and everything like that. So I'm really excited to show this off. Now what I've done is I have used uh, what I affectionately call the Hobbit house and I think a few other people in the community do and I have actually made one of the houses um, which is my main house I've used the same skin just to kind of replicate that I did want to use a third house in this area but there wasn't a house that was like small enough that I could fit in um, but I think overall it still has that same kind of feel and I do want to extend this area out eventually and I'd like to tie it into the tangled house um, I love how this has the same kind of like tree sort of thing attached to it so i really wanted to kind of tie it into that area so this will be expanded upon eventually um now to start with with like the front of this area i just have a bunch of foliage by this house we have this like festive pennant i think it's called um but i i love the detailing on this item i love the like sacks all the pumpkins the barrel with like the hay and everything like that like i love this item because of the fact that things are cluttered so close together so i knew i had to use this um and then as we come down here i just put a little seat in like sitting area i did actually decorate with the stack of books as well i was just thinking back to like the animal crossing days and how that was like such a common thing to decorate and i really want to take inspo from like those animal crossing days and kind of try and replicate that with dreamlight valley i know it's not always possible i mean one we don't have the same amount of items but also um i feel like there was a lot more you could do in terms of flexibility with decorating an animal crossing so um I definitely um, just want to take some inspo with certain things I mean that's like when I did my horror in the Forgotten Lands I was very much thinking back to the horror uh, islands on Animal Crossing and things like that so um, I definitely want to try and remember that cause sometimes I feel like stuck in a rut when it comes to decorating in Dreamlight Valley because I feel like the flexibility isn't there so I think I just need to think outside the box a bit so we do have the books there even though typically i'd know they'd get wet in the rain i'm still using them um over here we just have a like little garden greenery patch so i really tried to fill it with um foliage and things like that we have a little bird house we do have the uh vine flower lamp this is one of the nicest items in game um to the right here we have this little outhouse and we have this kind of like flower area i do want to maybe add a couple more things to this little patch but i'm not entirely sure what um because you can't put flowers like directly on this grass um it does <laughs> kind of mean you can't just put down regular plants and stuff you have to use like the potted foliage so that's why i did the flower pots and then this one with like the hydrangeas and stuff in it but i don't want to fill it just with those flower pots so um we'll see if i change that up or not and then we have this little bench here which i put wally's boot on because i feel like wally's boot is such a like hobbit core kind of item um and then we have this basket here as well which i just thought would be kind of nice like a very naturally handmade kind of item uh, that you could imagine them collecting flowers in and stuff like that we do also have the water trough here i did want to use this in um we'll get to it later i've got like a little chicken coop um and i was originally going to use this but i felt this item was too big so i ended up creating a touch of magic like little duck pond um even though it's for chickens but i mean duck pond chicken pond it, you know either way it works um but i still wanted to use this item because i do quite like this item so i've placed it here near the water um not the water near the flower beds because i felt like they tied together quite nicely 
Um, we've put this cart here in the firewood. I just felt it kind of had that rustic natural feel. And then we've got another vine flower lamp. And as you come round here, we do have access to this mining spot. I just put down a few um, of these toadstools because I did want to use them in the build. I didn't want to use them as much as I did in like the Tinkerbell build, but I still wanted that element of kind of like nature and stuff here. And then just like a little bit of space round here with like a tree and stuff. Um, coming back round to this side, we've got a little like well, um, I thought that might be a nice feature between the houses. We do have a lot of foliage here. I'm sort of trying to learn how to decorate with all the different types of grass and things like that. Um, I do wish we had sort of like more choice with that kind of thing and more choice with like the flower foliage like i've seen these butterfly flowers in the mulan realm in a smaller version in blue oh my god if we get that in game my valley is going to be covered covered in those <laughs> and then i use this fallen log um because i thought it would be again just like a cute feature kind of very natural and stuff and then i've clipped a lot of this grass into the building because if you use the beach flower uh the beach grass <laughs> you can clip it into items and it does clip quite nicely into the house so the house feels like kind of surrounded by grass and stuff like that um for those that don't realize as well because there's only one type of beach grass that does clip if you actually hover over the beach grass item which you can't really do here because you can't get close to it but like this is the tall beach grass if you just press the duplicate it means you'll always get that tall grass that does intersect so once you get one of those down what i would do and what i was doing was i was like placing an item and then i was like dragging that over when i had the right kind of foliage piece that i wanted so a little tip there just in case you're not aware we do have a little bit of space down here i've not really decorated there's a bit of grass and stuff you can't get down here um but for now i think that's fine <laughs> um i might swap it and push the tree back and the grass forward but we'll have to wait and see if i do do that um here I've got a little garden. We've got a few pumpkins outside because I thought that'd be a cute touch of what they've grown and like this pumpkin stack in the corner. Then I was trying to work out which kind of plants and foliage might look good. Um, sadly, my onions have not grown yet. So <laughs> I wanted to see how the onions look because the turnips from Eternity Isle, I think, look really nice. Um, so I contemplated perhaps using them, but I wanted to try some of the like valley grown um items and stuff so we've got a bit of lettuce here we've got some of the wheat and we do also have um the onions here but they're not grown we do also have the water pump here and a little bucket of water and then some tools because i just thought like obviously if you've got a gardener they're gonna need their tools and then just a few rustic wooden items that maybe they've had during their gardening times and barrels from items and such and then the little sack here so this is this little garden i do love this little hobbit house i think it's really cute and i love the kind of like the farmyard garden um then we come to this house which is our second house we have a little basket here which i thought was like just a cute little detail and stuff like that and then as we come in here we have our little chicken coop um so again i just kind of decorated it with some grass and stuff but i actually used the like sunlit plateau grass because i like that sort of um smaller height and stuff like that um i also felt like it offered a better sort of contrast in terms of color and stuff um we do have these uh little pears which we're using as chickens um someone mentioned it in my chat they were like oh you could use this and i was like oh my god yes i could and this is something that i have seen trisha's lovely games decorate with she has a lot of these in her meadow and everything and so like whenever like when i was decorating using these i just thought of her because i was like oh my god yeah that's something she's done 
for like the longest time <laughs> so I thought it was a good idea and then I made this custom touch of magic rug um, which I did because as I said that water trough was just a bit too big for the space I had here and especially for the size of the like what I'm using as chickens it just like it didn't make sense to have such a big water trough um, so I have made a custom touch of magic rug this is fairly simple to make by the way um, if you did want to make it I do have it in my shop at the moment um, but if you didn't want to organize a visit it's very very straightforward to make in terms of making it if I just go down here and go I'll go into customize just to kind of showcase the process all you need to do is when it comes to selecting the base um, you need to select this marbly kind of effect change the colors to like a blue um, obviously depending on the kind of blue colors you want you can customize it generally speaking you want to have like um, like a darker blue color a lighter blue color and like somewhere in the middle because that way you get the kind of highlights and the um the shadows of the water movement and reflections uh, you can also use if you have um this motif you could also use this throughout it to kind of create that water effect and then just duplicate it and stuff like that um, and then what I did for the outside was I used this um, piece here in miscellaneous and I just changed it to a green colour and then I dotted it all the way around but I chose a green that kind of blended with the um, the grass I did also use um, this shape here just to line the outside of the rug as well just so that when I had it underneath this item for instance so as you can see with that particular item when you have the gaps you can see through to the water which is fine um, but I kind of wanted to make it look like the water was a smaller section um, so I did then um, put these semicircles around and then when you overlay this most of it is green there is still a bit of water coming through which I think was fine but generally speaking the surrounding edge is all covered in green so that's basically the process so it is very very simple in case anyone did want to replicate it um we also have this little basket of eggs which I thought was appropriate for a chicken cube and originally when I was doing the companion houses I was looking through and I found Hey Hey's house and I placed that but it felt too big and someone mentioned in the comments I want to say Mumba Jewels but I could be mistaken could have been Melissa I'm not sure but someone someone in my comments uh, mentioned about using the typical companion house which originally I thought would be a bit weird but I thought you know I'll try it of course I'll, I'll give it a go um, and that's what I did and it actually worked perfectly it really reminds me of a rustic farm like chicken coop um, and then I did like one of the little chickens walking up to it then I've got like this chicken just wandering around and this one at the pond so that's my little chicken coop garden um so yeah that's effectively it that's my little hobbit town build i do absolutely love this build and it seems like a lot of the valley villagers love it like every time i'm here there's a ton of villagers like last night when i was finishing it off there was like daisy moana um i think we had donald and stuff like everyone gravitates to this area um so it is very popular in terms of a build way more popular than my fairy core build was uh with the valley villagers so yeah i absolutely love this i think it came out perfect um i can't wait to kind of extend this vibe throughout my meadow so i'm thinking maybe with my meadow i go with a bit more of a cottage core fairy kind of vibe um and then my forest can be much more of that whimsical magical fairy core vibe um obviously i've got to somehow do some kind of like beach cross fairy core vibe for dazzle beach um the forgotten lands is going to be very good because that's going to be kind of like dark fairy core 
the frosted heights is going to be good because it's going to be like very winter core kind of fairy core vibes sunlit plateau is going to be maybe a bit more tricky i think sunlit plateau and dazzle beach are going to be the two biomes that i struggle most with in terms of decorating and leaning into a kind of almost like fairy core aspect so they're probably going to be the two biomes that i perhaps leave to last the glade is going to be fairy uh, fairly easy um i think in terms of decorating as well because i have done a fairy core glade build before um i believe that's in my valley tour video and i may even have a separate video on the channel for that as well um and i'll probably do something very similar with my glade in terms of decor as to what it was before um certainly i think i want to use the orb pillars and do the kind of fairy circle with them again um so that's something that i'll probably integrate again in the build um but yeah this was my hobbit core build i hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know if this inspired you or if you're interested in doing something similar and i hope you enjoyed this build and i will see you all in the next video bye guys